Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Do you have his dear Esther? And I'm doing this because people asked me so much. More so than any game in ages, which is interesting because it isn't a game. So I've finished it. This is probably one of the first times I've ever done. In fact, it may very well be the first time I've ever done a WTF is of a game that I've actually finished. So first impressions barely counts when your game is an hour long. But it's not a game. That's all. So this was developed by The Chinese Room and Robert Briscoe. And its genre on Steam is adventure, indie, and casual. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is misleading because it's not a game. Again. So, why is it on Steam again? <laughs> uh, I have to wonder, honestly. What this basically is, is it, it's an art project, effectively. It's not a game. It has none of the defining characteristics of a game. It is, one might say, an interactive story, but the interactivity is basically an illusion. There is no interactivity whatsoever. Let me just put it this way. If you love holding the W key, then this thing is right up your alley. As it stands, I certainly did not. I literally finished this about five minutes ago. So this is an impression fresh from my mind of an experience that was little more than utter frustration and a complete lack of immersion and waste of time, sadly. I don't even have to explain that this is my personal opinion. Indeed, why would it not be? What else would it be, in fact? One has to ask. Is it a mystery? Is it not? Is the opinion real or imaginary? Don't even get me started. So, it's overall a fairly pretentious experience. A fairly, actually, let's go back there. A very pretentious experience whereby you walk through an island and you are shown things. And there are things in the environment that you kind of interact with and have one would imagine some kind of hidden or clouded or subtle meaning but if i'm totally honest i did not pick up on them is it simply because i'm a dumbass that is a possibility maybe i'm simply unreceptive to this kind of stuff as i don't find art galleries particularly interesting either unless there's an obvious amount of talent on display there the funny thing is about this game there is an obvious amount of talent on display especially when it comes to the visuals it is gorgeous and the audio is great too it's got a really good narrator who does it in a deliberately dry manner. Uh, there's not a huge amount of emotion there. There are at certain points, but most of it is pretty flat. That's deliberate, though. It's done so with purpose. And the... I'm not going to call it the game because it's not. The environment and just everything in general looks fantastic. Shouldn't be too difficult to do, admittedly, when it's completely non-interactive. It's the same reason why Mist and Riven looked really good back in the day, because there's barely anything you could do with it, so you could keep a lot of it fairly static. And what you've got here is a very, very small environment that you can spend a lot of time on. And also, there's not really a lot of places to go. You have to proceed down a linear path. There are some dead ends, which I personally find unbelievably frustrating, and it kind of busts the story experience, because those dead ends don't give you anything. You might go down there and expect, ooh, is there... Is there a bit of dialogue here that might explain something else of what's going on? And more often than not, there isn't. There's nothing there. And you then have to walk back to the area that you were in previously, which is painfully slow. You cannot sprint. You cannot move faster. You just walk at a very leisurely pace through the island, which, of course, artificially extends the length of this particular title. That is deliberate. I don't think there's any real doubt about that. When you go into a dark area, sometimes a flashlight comes on. Admittedly, it doesn't really help because there's nothing you really need to see with said flashlight. When I started the game, I explored the areas around the start, including various blown-out houses and things like that, looking for some kind of clue, and you never find one. You'll see some cryptic kind of writing on the wall later on. You'll also see these symbols, but... It doesn't explain at any point. If you're looking for a payoff, if you're looking for the game to suddenly explain what's going on, it doesn't. Again, if we even call it a game, which it isn't. <laughs> it doesn't tell you anything whatsoever, aside from these bits of narration that come in. And supposedly these are semi-randomized. Now, that doesn't mean that they're randomly generated. It just means that sometimes it'll play a different one if you want to go through twice for whatever reason, which I have no desire of doing because the last hour of my life, I feel, was wasted in a frustrating stupor in which I learned nothing and experienced very little. It's rather unfortunate, I have to say. 
the idea of telling a story via an interactive medium is something that a lot of people have been wrestling with for the longest time, and of course people within the industry continue to wrestle with it and often don't do it very well. It is done to greater or lesser extents. In this case, what they've done is made a story that could have very well just been a cutscene and probably should have been, because it doesn't benefit you at all in terms of the ability to control your character, assuming you even are a character. There's no evidence to suggest that you're even real. You walk through this area and you're thinking, well, you know what? They could accelerate this and just keep the dialogue going and tell me a story over the course of 20 minutes as opposed to dragging it out over the course of an hour. Because within the environment, I find basically nothing. The, the stuff that I do find is very obviously explained by the narration. So I never wonder why it's there to begin with. The, there's these landmarks that you go to, which of course are parts of the story one way or the other, but once again, they aren't really explained all that well either. You'll eventually run into a couple of things where it, you know, it, t it tells you the reason they're there in a very vague manner, but that doesn't explain anything either. And I don't want to go any further into the story, really, because it is kind of a spoiler. You know, how could you not spoil it? I am showing you footage in the background, which has deliberately had all of the dialogue cut out of it. So you'll see crossfades. I'm cutting the dialogue out so that you don't get spoilers, just in case you actually want to play this thing, which I will not call a game, because I have the feeling that game is going to have to be defined as something where you can actually affect the course of events, and you can't. You have two choices, stop moving, which isn't really a choice, and move, which just involves holding down the W key pretty much as you walk through, and sometimes running into a dead end that will waste your time and cause you a bunch of frustration. The story is delivered very slowly, and I believe the pacing is a big problem here. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to tell a story throughout this medium when you've got this illusion of interactivity. It's like walking through an art gallery. In fact, I think that's the best way to describe it. You walk through an art gallery, and the art gallery is supposed to tell you a story as you go along, assuming that it is an exhibit designed to do such a thing, which is what I feel Dear Esther is supposed to be. But it doesn't do it very well. And by the time I've got to the next bit of dialogue, I've probably forgotten what was said the time before that, and it's just been lost once again in a bored stupor of walking along, hoping against hope that something will actually happen. Many of you have heard of, no doubt, the caves in the game, which are very, very nice to look at. The entire game is very nice to look at. But in terms of it telling a story and the actual visuals telling a story, it doesn't really do anything other than invoke a sense of loneliness, which is not that hard to do when you don't put any living creatures in your actual game. There are many other games that have invoked a sense of loneliness, including, of course, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and probably the best example would be Shadow of the Colossus. But those are games. The sense of loneliness doesn't really do anything. I suppose it's... It almost, for me, feels like it's a bit of a trick, a bait and switch, sort of goading you into feeling something so that you feel that the experience is actually worthwhile. It's like, oh, you feel these things, but it's like you're kind of forced into that situation, and there's no purpose to you feeling like that. It doesn't help you with the story immersion. In fact, it just ends up with you being more confused by the end of it, as far as I'm concerned. It is quoted as being one of the most original first-person games of recent years. I disagree, because it isn't a game. A game requires some kind of objective, which I suppose this does. You know, getting to the end of it, which it doesn't seem like much of an objective to me. To me, it was like, oh god, when will this damn thing actually end? That is not exactly a great feeling to have. It requires at least some degree of interactivity, and I do not believe that holding W qualifies. I really, really do not. It is giving you control of the camera that would otherwise be controlled by a cutscene. It doesn't help, honestly. It, it really does not. It doesn't give me anything other than, once again, frustration and a lack of pacing. If it was a cutscene, uh, just a long 20-minute computer-generated movie, I would have probably enjoyed it more, because then the pacing would have been pretty much bang on perfect. They'd have had the means to control the pacing. And they do here as well, but of course they don't bank on you necessarily getting lost or running down the wrong corridor. I say running with the most liberal of applications of the word. They don't account for any of that stuff, and then by the time that you get to the various carefully crafted areas, you... You just don't really care about what's going on. 
this is, of course, all in my personal experience and my opinion. I believe I was jumped on on Twitter for expressing these kind of things. Some people really got into this. I personally did not. It's a remake of a mod, which, in my opinion, was once again just an art piece experiment, except they're charging money for this one, £7 specifically. It's 10 bucks, by the way, so what they're asking for is $10 for a 45-minute experience, which, in terms of price performance, is uh, fairly bad in comparison even to movies at the cinema, which are viewed by many people as quite expensive. You get more value for money by going to a cinema. You certainly get more value for money by going to an art gallery, especially when a lot of these exhibits tend to be free or extremely cheap one way or the other. Now, you can understand why they charge for it, because, of course, it takes man-hours to create it, but... The thing about developing computer software is that the man hours created are not necessarily taken into consideration by the consumer. What they gain from the experience and whether or not it was worth their time and money is what is really important. You can spend thousands of hours creating a game, but if it doesn't give a few hours of enjoyment to the player, then there's no real point. And they're not going to appreciate the thousands of hours that you sunk into it because you wasted their time. And it might seem selfish, but that is the reality honestly, of being a consumer. That is who a consumer is, and that's ha what you have to cater to. And if you don't do so, then you'll end up with a lot of very disappointed consumers. And I have to wonder if this game was really even marketed fairly, honestly. On Steam, you look at it, and you assume that it is a game. It has genres, adventure. Let's look at what's in the adventure genre. It's very easy. What have we got? Assassin's Creed, Alan Wake, Shank 2 is even in there, Law and Order Legacies, which is once again more interactive than this thing as well. So you can't put a genre on this thing, and you certainly can't pretend that it's a game, and I think that they really do have to explain from the very outset what this thing will actually be. Of course, it's really impossible to provide a demo for it, unless, of course, you want to go and play the mod. And if you do, then there's probably no point in playing the full thing anyway. You can say things like forget the normal rules of play and things like that, but then when you mix that in with one of the most original first-person games of recent years, you have certain expectations. And... If anything, I would warn people that you need to throw those expectations out of the window. Now, this was information that I was given before I started. I can't imagine what would have happened for the people that actually bought this thing on launch, hearing hype about it and saying, oh, you know, this is an experience that we should all have and end up walking away disappointed, minus $10. <sighs> it... It is not a good way to tell stories in the computer-generated medium, as far as I am concerned. It could be, I guess, if it was properly paced, but I don't believe that this is something that other companies should really be following. There are a few that have. There's a game called The Path, which is quite similar in that respect. There's even a game called Dinner Date, but the fact of the matter is that that game at least had some degree of interactivity to it, even if the interactivity was in and of itself meaningless. It, it was a waste of my time, in my honest opinion. It really was, and it's very dangerous to listen to people saying, oh, it's a brand new experience and so on and so forth, because some people are doing so because it makes them feel cool. It's kind of like hipsters, really, isn't it? It's the same idea. It's like, ooh, I, I'll sound edgy. And then, of course, there's the other side of the coin where I could sound edgy for blasting something, which has been described by many people, including, for some inexplicable reason, almost all the major game reviewers on Metacritic, as a really unique and cool experience. It is unique, but not in a good way. Bungie jumping off a sheer cliff face with a rope made entirely of live goats is unique. It doesn't mean I have any desire to do it, and the results may very well be suboptimal, which is what I feel about Dear Esther. It's, it's so hard to describe because I don't feel as a games commentator I'm even qualified to talk about it because it's not a game. You want me to talk about the writing? I can't. I don't have the necessary skills to do such a thing. Is it poetry? Is it a short story? Does anyone really know? I certainly can't figure it out one way or the other. I could certainly say from a game commentator's perspective that it looks nice. It really, really does. Wouldn't it be nice if the talents of this team were put to use on something that was actually a game? That would be a thought, I feel. I certainly think that that is worth doing. There's a lot of very cool assets in this game that look great. 
and are sadly wasted because, to me, the entire experience and their use was without merit or purpose. I don't know. I simply do not know what to make of Dear Esther other than the fact that I hated my time with it. To me, it was a waste of an hour, and you can say that gaming is a waste of time, but when you game, you feel you've accomplished something, even if you barely haven't, and even if you've wasted your time there, you feel, that was cool, that was fun. That This is neither of these things, really, and it doesn't provoke thought, it doesn't make me feel anything other than boredom and frustration. Maybe I'm just a flat, cultureless moron. It's a possibility. But for me, if I had bought Dear Esther as a consumer and not as a critic, reviewer, commentator, whichever you wish to use, then I would feel rather annoyed, honestly, that I'd bothered spending my time with it. That's it. That's my opinion of Dear Esther. That is what it is. It is not a game. If you wish to try it out, then just go in there knowing what it is. It is a slow-paced set of breadcrumbs with many gaps in between said breadcrumbs. You gobble the breadcrumbs up as they lead you to a destination, hoping against hope that you will find something a little bit more substantial as you go on, maybe the rest of the loaf of bread, but you never get it at all. And by the end of it, you just feel hungry for something that is worthwhile. Maybe as a gamer, you are conditioned to believe certain things should happen in your medium. I certainly am, I feel. And perhaps I cannot appreciate this. <laughs> I have to wonder if someone that doesn't play games at all could appreciate this. It's difficult to say. Feel free, if you've played this game, to leave your opinions, hopefully in a civilized fashion, in the comments section below. My name's been Total Biscuit. And I will see you next time.